Looks like we're live on my end. I've got it too. Yep, I think we're all set. All right, so here we are again. Happy Friday, everyone. Um, we're coming at you with another Quarantine Quarters live reading. My name is Madison Sedler. I'm one of the co-founders of Green Buffalo to Productions. And here with me is the other co-founder, my better half, Ellen Shearer. Oh, why, thank you. That's just far too kind. Hello. <laughs> um, we also oh, have on so um, <laughs> <laughs> we also have on the line with us Layla Janti and Zach Hattrick. Layla is our first board member of Green Buffalo, as well as a local playwright, actor, and director here in Buffalo. Um, and Zach Hattrick, who's another local director, actor, and playwright. Um, who's also our pretty cool video guy. Uh, this event that we bring to you every week would not happen without either of them. So thanks again for joining us for our 11th quarantine quarters, which is insane to me that we have been in the house for this long. <laughs> um, but thanks again so much, guys. You really are the backbone of GBP, and we love you so much. Um, if you like what we're doing and want to help us continue to do it. We do have our Patreon, it is live. We will put the link in the comments below. Um, you can come in at $5, $10, $15 and get a fun little shout out from us every quarantine quarters, as well as our live productions when we're able to come back in and be live again. Um, and you'll be getting a episode of Almost Paradise which is a radio drama that I am working on um, with the help of the GBP crew to edit and make sure that it is as wonderful as it could be. Um, you'll be getting those episodes at the $5 level. So definitely check our Patreon out. And if you do have $5 to spare, we know that times are hard, but if you do have um, some extra money, please consider donating to locally to Green Buffalo Productions. We're a very small theater company that is, um, we're two years old at this point. Um, going into our third season next year uh, is very difficult without having a second full season under our belts because of COVID. Um, so any little bit will help. Um, moving on, uh, Layla, if you're there, would you like to talk a little bit about the Buffalo Theater Workshop? Absolutely. So the Buffalo Theater Workshop was started by Emma English, and it is a um, group that is founded on the idea of, you know, we always need edits and it's always good to get extra eyes and ears on plays that you are working on. So Emma came up with this uh, idea of having a monthly space for artists to, uh, for playwrights to come and have their works read out loud and be workshop, uh, which has been really, really great. Uh, Ellen, Maddie, and I are all moderators along with uh, Emma who started it. And actually, this month, next Tuesday, we will be having our June reading, uh, which is for Maddie's uh, radio play, Almost Paradise. And we will be doing episode one, uh, so which is very exciting. Um, I really love uh, working on it. I'm going to be the moderator for this month. Uh, we do need a lot of women still. Uh, so if you are interested in uh, joining us, uh, definitely uh, email uh, Green Buffalo Productions or reach out to the Buffalo Theater Workshop. Either uh, Buffalo Theater Workshop would probably be best. <laughs> and we'll make sure to set you up so that you're on the cast list to read. It is next Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. So definitely let us know if you want to join us for that. And next, I believe, Ellen? Yes. Um, so not only is today uh, our quarantine quarters day, um, but it is also Juneteenth, so uh, I just wanted to mention that because it's very important. Um, if you don't know too much about that, we have a link that we'll drop um, so you can learn more about this lovely holiday. Um, and also I would be remiss to mention that um, because of all the things that are going on in our country right now, we want to make sure that we're sharing resources um, the most updated resources that we can. So we're going to be dropping that uh, Black Lives Matter um, link so that 
you can find out what you can do um, from your home um, with your wallet, with your voice, and all of that. Um, plus, I am sure you'll notice if you're watching the slideshow, which will be running in just a second, I forgot to press play. Um, there are a lot of projects that we're working on uh, that have upcoming deadlines. So uh, one of those is uh, What It Means to Be Human, which is a collaborative fundraiser show that we're hoping to put into production uh, next year, 2021. Um, basically, if you have any kind of story that um, deals with oppression that you have personally dealt with um, in your life uh, and want to share that. Uh, we're taking submissions for all sorts of uh, kinds of pieces, so poems, mon monologues, uh, dance, art, music, anything you uh, think will tell your story the best way that you can, uh, submit that to us. You can submit as many as you'd like. Um, we're also, to go with, with the theme of inclusion, looking for a third feature for next year. Yes, we are very ambitious, and we'd like to have three shows if we can, so if you have a story um, We'd like to hear that, a full length piece. We'll drop the link for the guidelines for that as well. Um, and what, are, what else do we have here? Oh, also Spooky One Act, the deadline is coming up very soon at the end of this month. So if you've been writing for Quarantine Quarters, maybe if you haven't been writing for Quarantine Quarters but wanna write something for a cool spooky Halloween show, we are taking su uh, submissions for short film. Uh, and don't worry if you haven't written a film a screenplay before, we can help you out with that. Um, you can send it in, send in your script and we'll give you notes and we can uh, help you resubmit it before the 30th. Um, like I said, we try to be as inclusive and also as helpful as possible. So um, new people, new writers, new actors, new everybody, please email us and we want you to be involved. Um, Layla, do you wanna give a quick update on our Museum of Fuckboys show real quick? Yeah, so very quickly, um, we were going to be doing Museum of Fuckboys this August due to uh, COVID. Well, it was going to be back in March, and then due to COVID, we had to move it to August. And now, because COVID is still happening, we're not sure when we're going to be able to put it up exactly. But we are very excited that we are going to be filming the production. That way, uh, we don't have to have people all physically together and run the risk of getting anyone sick. So we are going to be doing a filmed version of the Museum of Fuckboys, which is an amazing play written by a local playwright, Justin Karcher. So absolutely, uh, we will keep you all updated as soon as we get final dates for when that will be coming out. But we are very excited that we will still be able to put this project out, even though it won't be in a physical space. So yeah, that's also really cool and exciting. Yay. Um, next. Before we and before we get started, um, we're just gonna shout out the. Uh, we really blew through this today, um, but before we get started, we're gonna just shout out our Patreon members, our patrons, so to speak, um, and a huge shout out to actor today, Sarah Henderson, who just uh, donated ten bucks a month through our Patre Patreon. She's gonna get a whole bunch of really cool stuff from us now. Thanks so much, Sarah, for that. I know you can hear me um, for that fun little thing. You're working for us. We should be paying you, but she here she is paying us. She's the greatest. Um, but we'd also love to give a special shout out to our patrons, um, Catherine Schwebka, Leslie Cairns, Ryan Schlia, Sean Lewis or Sean Cheeky, depending on how you know him and Wayne Conover. Thank you all so much for, you know, donating a little bit to us. It goes a long way. We're very close to our first goal. And this means that by next year, when we um, do open up again, we're going to be able to have a much easier time paying our actors and giving them um, the money that they deserve with all the hard work that they put towards every single show that we throw at them. Um, we love our actors. We love the people we work with on the crew. Um, and we just want to show them how much we really appreciate everything that they do. So this is really going to go a long way. So uh, thank you so much, Sarah, and everybody else for the, your uh, patronage. And I think that that's everything that we have, Ellen. Is that correct? Uh, I think so. Um, yeah, we just have to announce our plays and start reading. Great. I think you're first up. Okay. Look at that. <laughs> and I have it right in front of me. So that's good news. 
Um, so first we have The Pumpkin Pack by Elizabeth Giffen Speckman. Uh, it's actually her birthday today, so happy birthday, Elizabeth. We're gonna happy birthday, show. Elizabeth. I'm keeping with our timeliness, I'd love to sing, but we don't have time. So, <laughs> so let's just double check those actors and let's make sure everybody is ready. Uh, let me get my list out. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, for the Pumpkin Pact, we have Christina, played by Julie Greider, uh, Jenny, played by Ruth Stanley, one of our playwrights, this evening, and I'll be reading Stage Directions. Everybody unmuted? Yeah, looks like it. Okay, great. The Pumpkin Pact. Clearing in a cornfield, two middle schoolers, Jenny and Christina, enter. It is 2004. Jenny is lugging a large bag stuffed to the brim, but it's closed so they we can't see what's inside. Christina has a backpack and is dressed in all black. They stop. So just so you know, you get to carry this big, big ass bag. Okay. Christina is distracted looking around. She seems to size up the space. Seriously, I'm not gonna carry it back for you. I heard you. Okay. Okay. Are you going to tell me what we're doing out here yet, or? Not sure. You're not sure what we're doing, or you're not sure you're tell me? Jenny, I'm concentrating. What? Making sure we're in the right spot. Jenny looks around. She is exasperated and confused. Are you, like, going to com commit a crime or something? What? No, don't be such a baby. I'm not a baby. I'm older than you are. Barely. Three months is pretty significant. It's one-fourth of a whole year. Congratulations on being one-fourth of a year older, Jen. Why am I here? You made me lug the stupid bag through a stupid cornfield, and now you're being mean and... I'm being mean? How old are you? I'm one-fourth of a year older than you. Fine. You're not just being mean. You're being a bitch. This is a big moment for Jenny. She has never called Christina a bitch before. It may be the first time she's even used the word. She's nervous. She waits. All right. That's it. I just I just called you a bitch. I heard you. You're freaking me out. No response from Christina. Jenny kicks the bag. What is in this stupid, stupid bag, huh? She opens it. Large pumpkins roll out. Pumpkins? You had me for you to a cornfield jesus h christina what are we i told you to stop doing that what emphasizing the christ in my name in it your name is christina not for long you mean not for long jenny goes to the bag and removes pumpkins and grabs large books and grabs a large boat bag. It's a grimoire. That thing must be like 500 pages long. Um, what is it? 666 pages, actually. I couldn't have added a page from being satanic. That's the point? What's the point? Satan. I'm sorry, what? She holds the book up. Tina, you said we were just going for a walk and that we'd have a picnic and I had to stay home and made shrinkadinks, but you said... Me, we took a walk and we will have a picnic. Calm down. Why do you have some evil book and a bag of pumpkins? Well, I told you, name change. What exactly are you planning on? I was thinking I liked the sound of Georgina. 
George Gina. I mean, it's Georgina the Teen Witch. What? It has a nice ring to it. It's like a bit fragative, but let me get this set up. Christina begins to arrange the pumpkins in a pentagram. You have just asked people, George Gina. I mean, no, because that's dumb, and no one would do it. I need it to stick. But why pumpkins? Christina holds up the book. I don't make the rules. Okay, why did the pumpkins have to be this big? You couldn't have gotten like those baby tabletop pumpkins at the registers at Myers. You think that this is a joke? I have to think. They work in silence. They finish. Okay, so now what? I'm hungry. Now I have to say the incantation and then incantation. Yes. Okay, well, hurry. She waits. Christina studies the book, embarrassed. Go ahead. I can't concentrate when you stare like that. I'm not staring. Yes, you are. In order to show interest in the ceremony, I unwittingly Christina. Don't. Sorry. Forgot. Please just hurry. I'm hungry. You did bring food, didn't you? You said a picnic. Dad, there's Lunchables in my bag. Just, uh, I need to concentrate. Jenny grabs Christina's book bag. No dessert? Comes in the Lunchable. One Oreo cookie is not dessert. Sorry. You had a whole box of Dunkaroos in your pantry and you couldn't have packed some? You're so selfish. Jenny, I'm in the middle of something. Shut up! Fine. Why did you even bring me? Jenny eats angrily as Christina mutters. Jenny tries to make the Oreo last. Okay. Now, I need your phone. What? I need your cell phone. Why my phone? Because, Jenny, I don't have a phone. Yes, you do. And my mom let me get a phone was because you had a not grounded, okay? My mom confiscated my- No! No! You are not going to use my cell to call Satan. It's not to call anyone. Why do you need a phone? To burn it? Christina takes a lighter out of her pocket. No! Honey, you my friend or not? I'm honestly, honestly really leaning towards not right now. Cute. You can join all the others who aren't then. Have fun. I mean, what is this about? You've been acting really off lately. Is it because... No, I'm not being anything. I'm finally being myself. That's all. And I just thought my best friend would help me. Why would some ancient spellbook even mention a cell phone? It's supposed to be like a gazillion years old? You didn't get ripped off? I did not get ripped off. Jenny takes the book. Christina tries to get it back. Where did you get this? Give it back! Do you use a website? eBay? No! e -ad? Stop, okay? I got it, for your information, from Trisha Lawrence. From Trisha? Yes, it was her aunt's, and her aunt was a witch, and she gave it to Trisha to help her become more popular at school this year, and it worked! So then, Trisha said she saw, felt sorry for me after- Oh my god, I got ripped off!
bitch. Christina, half of this is written in magic marker. It's scented not licorice. It seemed authentic. Jenny holds up the book. Really? Christina is Christina is humiliated and angry. She start, kicks she starts kicking the pumpkins and gets more and more angry. What's really wrong, Christina? How are you doing all of this? This this and trying to I'm not trying to do anything. Does this have anything to do with Stop. No. It just seems like No, it doesn't. Stop. Just Christina. Stop. Jenny. Stop. Okay. Okay. Can I please just have your phone? Christina. Please? I can't afford a new phone and the book is made up. I'm not going to burn it. I just need to call my mom. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here. Jenny pulls out a flip phone. Christina dials. Um, can you come get me? The cornfield by the Hansons' house? I, I don't know. Yeah, Jenny. We were just playing around and I just got... No, I know I'm not supposed to be... I'm sorry. Just... Okay, can you hurry, please? Please hurry. Christina is crying. Jenny hugs her and holds her while she cries. It's okay, Christina. I just thought, what if I changed my name and changed my... No. No. I thought, I thought my dad might come back. I can't leave because of you. How do you know that? Because I know. How? Just do. She holds her friend and strokes her hair. Here. Let's do it. Let's burn the phone. Oh, it's dumb. And you're right. It, it doesn't matter. Okay, well, then let's do another spell. What? The book's fake. I have one. What? Not your hand. She does. Jenny puts out her own hand. She has picked up a rock and she cuts her hand. What are you doing? Now, do you? Christina nervously does. Jenny grabs Christina's hand. Ah, shake. They shake hands. There you go. You're a witch now. What was the bonded now for life? Best friends for life, huh? And you can bet your life on it. Christina hugs Jenny again. Oh, ow! Wait, uh, don't get blood in my hair. I have to go to my grandma's for dinner. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean. The girl starts <laughs> laughing. A car horn, horn hunks. That's that's my mom. We should go. Okay. They stand. Wait, I have another idea. What? Jenny grabs a grimoire and throws it into the center of the pumpkin pentagram. Lighter? Christina smiles. She pulls the lighter back out. She flicks it on. Blackout. Well, thanks, guys. That was really nice. Great job. Um, I'm still laughing about that line uh, that uh, the Christina, the teenage witch, or the uh, the teenage witch line is a bit derivative because of Sabrina, the teenage witch. I laughed so hard when I read that. Um, thanks so much. Uh, great job, Elizabeth. Um, let's go on with the next play. So I will be reading Smashing the Boys' Names by Leslie Cairns. Um, I do want to give a heads up to any of our listeners or anyone who is joining us. 
there is a trigger warning on this for mentions of suicide and assault. Um, so just a heads up, if you are joining us for this, definitely, definitely just keep that in mind. And if you need to step away and come back, we totally understand. Um, so for Smashing the Boys' Names by Leslie Cairns, we have Holly being played by Suzanne Fata. We have LJ being played by Ellen Scherer. And we have Emma Jean being played by Sarah Henderson. And uh, me, Leila Janti, I will be reading the stage directions. So I'm just going to check and make sure everyone is good. Yep. Okay. So we are going to get started. Scene. Lights come up on a locker room, save for one person, Emma Jean. She is rinsing out a razor blade, and we see some red on her arm as she bandages herself. Then we see her turning on the showers of the boys' locker room, drenching her, and the blood swirls down the drain. <laughs> Go away. Go down the drain. One year, here's to me, purge free. And now I just cut instead, little red marks. How amazing I am. Go me. I need a cake. But instead I sit here. Instead... Emma Jean hears footsteps walking towards her. She looks around and puts the razor in her purse quickly, and her flip phone falls out. Enter Holly, her former therapist, who is now retired. She walks in peacefully and notices the scene around her and folds her arms. She has a tote bag over her shoulder with a yoga mat sticking out. Emma Jean, I knew I would find you. Happy one-year purge free. You haven't changed at all. Uh how, how did you get here? I, I was supposed to be, be alone. I heard you were visiting. We're friends on the social medias now, remember? Since I'm retired and all, I'm so much older than I could take. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I have known you for eight years now. Yeah. Wow. Almost ten years ago. God, I was so... Scrawny? Eyes always red, always carrying a coffee mug and offering to buy me some, even though you had little money. Yep, just me living in a rich person's town on a dime. But you left and you went away. Like magic, you got through it. Like magic. It's been 10 years today since... Right here in this locker room, one at a time, until all three were done. And then my anorexia bloomed. From that day on, I wasn't Emma Jean. I was Emma, who would give it up anywhere, even in this bloody locker room. You were raped here, Emma Jean, 10 years ago today. And one year ago, you decided to give up your eating disorder. Why are you still here checking in with me? You're retired. Shouldn't you be bird watching or something? <laughs> in a way, I, uh, I still bird watch. I excuse me? I viewed all my clients, especially the young ones, who were suffering from eating disorders, depression, dark spots too hard to name, like my little birds. They would someday fly from the nest away from me. Once, they learned how to truly fly and be free. Cheesy, I know. So now I like hearing how my clients are doing, how successful. So that's why I brought you this. Let me see here. She rummages through her bag, finds a pumpkin, and takes it out. For you, a pumpkin to carve or to paint, the choice is yours. Thanks, Holly. Do you know why I got you a pumpkin? To be honest, no. <laughs> pumpkin scones. That was the first unsafe food you ate in my office to get over your aversion to sweet foods that you like to throw up afterwards. I thought you might want a talisman or something to remind you of how far you've come. Talisman? I know what you're doing. Let me get past you. No, don't, don't grab that. Ah, a grimoire. Hmm. 
The Sworn Book of Honorius. Most women your age are out dancing or something. Imogene, what are you doing here? Are you going to take revenge on those boys with the spell? If so, I do not recommend. N no, no, jeez. I'm here to do something else. I'm listening. Tell me, Imogene. You know, when I was in high school, back when the assault happened, do you remember who I was? Frightened young woman, depressed for a long time, carrying the weight around her. I can't believe you're still standing here when I just showed you a spell book, basically. <laughs> we all need a little magic sometimes, hmm? Besides, the sworn book of Honorius is one of the oldest tricks in the book. Well, let's just say I'm not really better. Let's just say I haven't changed. But this book, it helps. Helps how? Come on, let's go somewhere and talk it out. No, no, we can't talk it out. Not now. It's too late. Remember? Going back to my story, I was a cheerleader, a cross-country runner. I would run, and when I hit those patches in the woods before the finish line, I would pump my arms, and I thought that the whole world was clapping for me. Or when I leapt in the air as a cheerleader, I thought that feeling of tumbling down and being safe, as if the whole world was a safety net for me, was real. And now I know, 10 years later, that I'm just this body. I'm not much of anything. And I still crave skin and bones, like, like a skeleton. I'm a gene. You've changed. It's your one year anniversary of being changed, of not making yourself sick or puking. Leave it. I won't leave it. You have a cut mark on your arm and I'm staying here until we leave this place from your past until we replace your heart with something else. You've earned it, a year is a major deal. Emma Jean taking the pumpkin over her head. I have not changed, okay? She smashes the pumpkin on the ground. Pumpkin guts scatter around the drains of the showers. How did you know I would be here? Because you conjured me up to get out of here. Emma Jean, when you cut yourself, you passed out. I am your talisman to bring you out of this. No, I, I washed it off. It's gone. It's fine. Why is there a flip phone over there? She oh, gestures wow. towards her bag. Oh, wow. Hurt girls can't get iPhones? <laughs> because you're conjuring up your past. You're stuck. You're passed out from loss of blood. I'm here to get you out, okay? I don't want to get out. Okay. The damage is done, so I'll be leaving. You're, you're leaving now? As you wish, I am. Besides, I'm so much older than I can take. I don't want to watch you drown in an old locker room with no one around. No, please, please stay. We'll call someone. Uh, the, the flip phone. Mm -hmm. No, the battery is dead. Past you was trying to shut down. So you drained the battery on your phone so no one could call you. Oh, jeez. Okay, well, what can I do? Go look at your book of spells. Trust me, I already know what you did. You, you do? You put a spell on yourself that kept you exactly as you are. You look like you did a year ago, sickly, skinny, that you throw up all the time, don't you? I thought you were a ghost in my past. How do you know everything? A talisman. I'm a talisman. I'm here to help you get away from these spells, these dark tricks. But I have to want to? Exactly. And we have to do something to reverse the dark magic of the book. 
Emma Jean opens the book and flips page after page. I've read this a lot of times. I don't think there's a spell to undo death or to go back and just not cut your skin or to walk out of this locker room alive to forget the boys faces and their names. Luckily, your old therapist knows a way out. He always did. I'm smart. I'm sorry I smashed the pumpkin. My she dear. Runs over, sorry, she runs over and hugs her. My dear. Why do you think I brought something that you could smash? I knew you were hurting. Some things never happened, so you never forgot them. Yeah, no one in the town ever believed me. Not even my friends. Only you. Only me. Are you ready? We have two steps to get out of this, both easy and complicated at the same time. I'm not sure. Do it for me, so you can grow old and bird watch someday. What about... I... I don't know. What about LJ, your sister? Oh, fuck. In your pain, you forgot about her. About me, about how much I love you. Even if I retire, that doesn't go away. How could I leave LJ? What was I thinking? Buying this plane to get home and instead of driving to her in her group home, I drove to this place to cut myself and pass out? Who am I? A person. You're Emma Jean. Come on, the book wants you to get out of its spell. Two steps. Are you ready for the first one? Okay. Emma Jean wrings her hands, nervous. Say the name of the boys, the men who did this to you. The names that no one ever said in your family, your school, in your group of friends, from even the principal or the community. Holly, how is that going to help? Saying their names brings the ghost pain to the surface. Bring it up with me. Taylor. Taylor. He grabbed my hair when he did it. K Kyle. He was my ex-boyfriend and was the one who snuck me some fireball before they led me there so that I'd be easier to spin around. One more. And, and... Say his name. One more. You're doing great. Hayden. He was, he was my best friend. There you go. Now hold my hands. Hayden. Kyle. Taylor. Grabbing my hair. Spinning me around. Invisible to anyone but my mind. What did I do wrong? There you go. Give the pain to me. I know it's cheesy, but easy does it. Now, let's do step two. Picture a happy moment with LJ. Seriously? Go from saying their names to my sister? Mm-hmm. You can do it. Conjure up her lilac-flavored sweetness, her sarcastic manner, her Down syndrome cheeriness, her affinity for hugs that last the completely right amount of time. Holly sets down her bag, takes out her yoga mat. She sits there and looks at Emma Jean. I'll just be here doing some namaste. I can't concentrate when you stare like that. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Conjure up your sister and I'll be here watching along. Lights go to black. When they come up, Holly is on one side of the stage with her yoga mat, doing various poses and pausing to watch sometimes. Emma Jean is on a couch, clutching her stomach, obviously in pain. Her sister starts to enter the stage. Ouch. Oh, okay. I'm going to pretend to be asleep so LJ doesn't know that I'm hurting. 
how do I explain what's happened to me to someone like her? I can't. So now we're drifting apart because I don't have the words to gently explain why I'm falling apart and so sad. Emma Jean shuts her eyes. LJ walks up to Emma Jean, thinking she's asleep. Oh my god, sissy, are you there? LJ gives her a tap, then checks her forehead in one fluid motion, like she has done this many times before. Emma Jean is still pretending to be asleep. LJ walks downstage and taps her fingers to her face over and over. Emma, sick. Sissy, sick. Oh, got it. Be back, sissy. LJ leaves the stage. Emma Jean looks quickly around and sits up in pain. Are there ways to describe to someone so innocent what it's like to be taken advantage of? Is there a way that I can be the kind of person LJ needs me to be? Oh shoot, she's coming back. Emma Jean lays back down and closes her eyes. LJ enters with a warm washcloth as well as ice wrapped in it. Sissy, sick. Oh, oh no. Sissy, I brought ice. Ice. Feel better. Headache, poor sissy. LJ leans down and gives her a kiss and wipes her hair away from her. Sissy, I love you. Feel better. LJ walks off stage and gives Holly a high five. Holly walks over to Emma Jean and sits down on the couch. She thought I had a migraine. That's why she brought that. If only what happened could be fixed with a warm washcloth. Oh, Holly. Imogene falls into her arms. Lights go down. When they come up, we are back with Holly and Imogene only, and they're in the locker room again. Conjure her up when you go back to Earth, okay? I'll be watching from a bird's eye view. No, oh, please, don't leave. You know I died two years ago. Stop. Stop. I need you to go back to that world. The one that's so heavy. LJ needs you back. As soon as you wake up, use the flip phone that I left in the purse and press any button. You said it was broken. In the present, it's there. Remember, I hated technology. A little present from you to me. I got you a new pumpkin, too. When you wake up, you'll press that button as quick as you can. It will call 911 and you will scream into the microphone that you need help. You hear me? That you need help. And you're at the Amber Pines High School locker room where the boy shower is. You understand? Okay. Can, can you come with me? No, but I'm leaving the book here with me. And I'll be here every step of the way as you journey back to the present day, okay? Okay. Holly. I already know, little bird. You can keep having pain and hurt. You can relapse and throw up sometimes. You don't need spells to stay away from the hurt. Just let your new therapist in. Let memories of me and LJ in. Let people in, okay? And never visit this place alone again. I don't want to leave you. Can I just stay? It's always your choice, but I think you want LJ to rub your back again for a pretend migraine that's instead a type of pain that you can't explain that exists in your head. Oh, Holly, will it hurt? When I go back to that place? Yeah, it will hurt. But use the flip phone. It will save you. The only phone that ghosts can communicate with. I want you to be a full flying bird, not a skeleton of bones who looks at the ghosts of her past. Do you understand me? I do. Emma Jean hugs her. Goodbye, Holly. One, two, Three, the flip phone. Don't check out any more spell books. Okay. Holly, you'll always be there for me in this way. Conjure me up, Emma Jean. Conjure me up to say their names when the time is right. Now you're going. Lights fade. 
When the lights come up again, Emma Jean is on the floor. There's magically a flip phone lying open, as well as a pumpkin. The pumpkin is made of wood, like a totem pole or a talisman, not able to be smashed. Emma Jean grabs the flip phone and presses any button. From offstage. 911, how can we help you? Please, please. I'm in the boys' locker room of Amber Pines Elementary. I'm bleeding. I don't feel right. But I want to. Stay with us. We're on our way to come save you. Blackout. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I know that was probably hard to listen to, but very important. Um, and we're very, very thankful that Leslie was able to write this um, and send it in to us. Um, thank you. Um, so the next play is going to be read by Maddie, I believe. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Wow. Thank, uh, thanks again to our two wonderful readers and to Layla who jumped in in the middle of that play because I forgot that there was a 911 uh, helper on the line in the end of it. But thank you so much um, for reading for us. Just another quick shout out, um, especially to Sarah Henderson, who is just on this play, um, to our Patreon members. Uh, Wayne Conover, Sean Lewis or Sean Cheeky, Sarah Henderson, Ryan Schlea, Leslie Cairns, who wrote the play, and Katie Schwebka. Please, um, the Patreon is in the comments, and we're looking for all sorts of new shows for next year, and we really want to be able to do them justice. Um, shows that, you know, might take on topics such as this one, um, suicide, and having different kinds of actors, such as an actor with Down syndrome, come in and play the part. We unfortunately weren't able to find one for this reading, but um, that's something that we're looking to do and expand our inclusivity here at Green Buffalo Productions. Um, well, let's get moving on to Burner Phone by Ruth Stanley. Uh, just checking to make sure my actors are all set. We have Zoe is being played by Sarah Henderson, um, and Sam is being played by Julie Greiger. Um, you guys look like you're all ready to go. Um, so let's get this started. So lights up on a girl's locker room. Zoe and Sam walk into the locker room drinking water from their water bottles. They just finished their volleyball practice. Zoe sits down on the bench and starts pulling down her knee pads. Oh, gosh, that practice was rough. It's because we lost yesterday. Yeah, by two points in game five. It literally could have gone either way. Yeah. Sam sits down on the bench next to Zoe. Did you bring it? Yeah, it's in my locker. Okay. Are you sure that we should be doing this? No, I am not going to let you back out. I am not trying to back out. Good, because she deserves this. Silence. Zoe and Sam both open up their lockers to grab their bags. Zoe pulls out a book and hands it to Sam. Here. Is this it? Sam examines the book. Yep, that's my mother's grimoire. Looks so plain. That's the point. You don't want a book full of spells to stand out. That makes sense. Zoe takes the grimoire from Sam. Zoe closes her locker and sits down on the bench. Okay, so what kind of spell do we want to do? Sam closes her locker, holding her bag. She takes a seat next to Zoe. <laughs> I don't know. I've never done this before. Okay, you need to relax. Heather deserves this. She is such a bitch. I guess. You are too nice. She has bullied you for years. It's time for some payback. So he starts flipping through the grimoire looking for a spell. Right. Okay. Well, what about this one? It will give her bad luck for at least the next week. Um... Sure. Do you think that's enough? Yeah, I don't want to do anything to hurt her. You really are just too nice. What's the name of the spell? Should we Google it to see what it could do? 
Why don't you just ask Siri? Hey, can I borrow your phone? What? Why can't you use your phone? My mom took it for talking back to her. But I've been texting you all day. I just thought you got a new phone since you gave me a new number. Sam digs in her bag and pulls out a flip phone. I've been using this flip phone. I have unlimited text, but I can't use the internet. Well, let me see. Sam hands the flip phone to Zoe. She examines it like she's never seen anything like it before. How do you even text on this? It takes some practice, but I've been using this phone to message Justin. He got it for me a few months ago. And here, I thought you were goody-goody. But you totally have a burner phone to text a boy. I'm kind of impressed. Thank you. How long have you been talking to Justin? It's nothing. Just around six months. He got you a burner phone. That's something. <laughs> so, are we doing this spell? Yes, but I'm putting a bookmark on the Justin thing because I need more details than that. Zoe hands her phone to Sam. Here. Thanks, but let's just do the spell. Okay. Zoe shifts in her seat and holds the grimoire out in front of her. Sam is staring at her, watching her every move. I can't concentrate when you stare at me like that. Sorry. Sam turns away from Zoe. Okay, let's do this. Blackout. Scene two, a cornfield. Zoe and Sam are standing on the side of the road, staring out at the cornfield. Do you think she will notice? Are you joking? We turned her family's cornfield into a pumpkin patch. There are at least a thousand smashed pumpkins here. Yeah, this is going to suck to clean up. And in just a few days, imagine the smell of all these rotting pumpkins. <laughs> oh, this turned out better than I expected. Well, the damage is done, so I guess I'll be leaving. Do you want to ride? Yes. But first, take a photo. Want to remember this? Sam poses in front of the cornfield, and Zoe takes the photo of her phone. Okay, I took some good ones. Let's go before anyone catches us. Okay. Sam and Zoe start walking off the stage. So, you and Justin are a thing. Not sure. He got you a burner phone. He likes you. Zoe wraps her arms around Sam's shoulders, and they laugh, walking off stage. Blackout. The end. Ah, what a nice, fun little play after that heavy one that Leslie wrote. Um, great job, ladies. Thank you so much. Um, moving on to our last piece. Uh, looks like Ellen's going to be reading stage directions on this one. So, Elle, you want to take over? Yes. Um, right before I uh, go into this play, one more shout out to all of our lovely patrons, Patreon members, however you say it. I don't know. I've heard it either way, uh, including our new uh, member, Sarah Henderson. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, we got Katie Schwabka. We got Sean Cheeky. We've got Wayne Conover. We've got uh, who, who am I missing? There's a couple more. I don't have them in front of me. Ryan Schlea, um, Wayne, Katie, Sarah Henderson, Sean Cheeky, and we have one more. Oh my gosh, I just had it Leslie. like a, a second ago. <laughs> Leslie, duh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was listening to. All right. Anyway, moving on. Okay. So, last play of the night uh, Fountain of Youth by Kelly Booth. Uh, we have a couple people reading. Might want to tell you who they are. One second. Um, there we are. Okay. So, we have Clara, played by Suzanne Feta. Eleanor, uh, played by not Tammy because she couldn't make it. Um, is it Julie? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, and Annabelle, played by Ruth Stanley. And then I'll be reading uh, stage directions. <clears throat> scene one. Scene one. Lights up on the gym locker room of the Senior Citizen Center. It features rows of lockers and benches. At rise, Clara and her friend Eleanor are entering at the end of the aerobics class. Clara is winded and immediately heads to the bench to sit down, while Eleanor enters spryly, still enjoying the energy of the class. <sighs> girls great class see you next week 
I feel good. That was a terrific class. So happy they finally got a younger instructor who really lets us do things. I was getting pretty tired of just crossing and uncrossing my arms over my chest. I felt like they were preparing me for nothing more than fitting in my casket. Okay, Clara? Girl, what's wrong? You need some water? Oh, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. Ugh, I am so much older than I can take these days. Nonsense. You're only as old as you feel. Yeah, and today I feel 105. Look at you. You look younger somehow. Fresh. Energized. What's your secret? Lots of water. Daily vitamins. A drink from the Fountain of Youth. <laughs> The Fountain of Youth? What's that? They are interrupted by the jingle of an ancient cell phone. Ooh, hang on. She rifles through her bag and pulls out an old flip phone. Oh? Oh, hi, Arthur. Still on for tonight? Halloween dance, silly. Do you forget? Good. I can't wait to see you, too. Yes, I'm heading home right now to finish my costume. Well, mister, you will just have to wait and see. Okay, see you later. Well, that sure sounds like fun. Oh, it's just Arthur. He's only 35. He's taking me to the Halloween dance at the community center tonight should come. There'll be lots of handsome widowers there, just ripe for the picking. Oh, no, no, not this year. Just, just not feeling up to it. Well, if you change your mind. Uh, no, I'll call you. Have fun. See you tomorrow for the ghost town tours. I gotta save my energy to chase around all those children that are stuffed up with sugar. <laughs> oh, it'll be fun. They alone will keep us young. Eleanor heads for the door. Oh, wait, you forgot to tell me about the Fountain of Youth? She pauses at the door, turns back, and winks. Don't worry. It'll find you when the time is right. But... Eleanor exits. Oh, uh, when the time is right. Time is right. Not sure how much time I've actually got left anymore. Clara picks up her bag and starts toward the locker room door. Time? Time? Is it the right time? Oh, who's there? Uh, it's me, your prettier, younger, spryer self. Okay, Eleanor, if this is your idea of some kind of joke. Eleanor is off living her life as if she were 25. Ew. Please. These days I'm lucky if I get out of bed in the morning. I call that a day's work. <laughs> oh, God. Now I'm talking to myself. Well, that you are, but not in the way you think. I'm here. Where? Here. Over to the mirror. Clara hesitantly obeys and walks to the mirror, looking in. Good. Now what do you see? What do I see? I see a sad, withered woman barely able to live her life anymore. What has happened to me? I'm so, so old. You're seeing that because that is what you want to see. Look closer. Okay, this is ridiculous. Look close. Clara squints into the mirror with a penetrating gaze. Now, what do you really see? Oh, it's, it's me. Oh, 
only so much younger, so much lovelier. <laughs> I've forgotten that I was quite the looker in my early years. That you were. If you listen closely, I will can find that lost, long lost beauty again. Clara is staring. She is somewhere far away. Hello? Hello? Clara? I can't con concentrate when you stare like that. Oh, uh, sorry. I, I was somewhere else. She hands her an old grimoire through the mirror. Clara takes it. Now, listen closely to my directions. You shall find your lost youth and restore you to your glory. You will never look or feel your age again. I'm listening. <laughs> Blackout. Scene two. Lights up on Main Street of an old ghost town. This town is part of the heritage of the city it inhabits and sees quite a lot of tourist traffic, especially around Halloween. Lights up on Annabelle clutching a tour map and looking around helpless and lost. Clara enters wearing her tour guide outfit. She notices Annabelle right away and watches for a moment from afar before smiling and approaching her. Well, hello, dear. Welcome to Wild West Ghost Town and Haunted Saloon. Can I help you find her your way? Oh, thank goodness. I'm here for the three o'clock tour. I stopped to snap a few photos and I seem to have lost my group. No worries, dear. We'll make sure you are reunited with your tour in no time at all. Come, come, follow me. But I, I thought they went that way. Nonsense, dear. I know the tour route like the back of my hand. Chop, chop. You don't want to miss the whole thing, do you? guess not, but... Good. Then move. Blackout. Scene three. Lights up on the interior of Clara's living room. Annabelle is tied to a chair in the center of the room. Clara is to one side, fastidiously consulting an old grimoire, a book of spells. And Annabelle has tape over her mouth and is struggling to speak. Mmm. Mmm. Just be quiet. Mm. I can't concentrate. Hmm. Now, let's see. Spell for restoration of youth. Here we are. <clears throat> you have been chosen to complete this journey to the restoration of your youth, if you so choose. Do not take this decision lightly. Once done, it cannot be undone. Yeah, yeah, there is no decision to be made. I'll do anything to be my younger self again. By now, you should have located the subject that shall help you with your task. Be sure to secure him or her tightly so that they cannot escape. They will be vital in this process. Okay, check. Done. Thank goodness you came along when you did, dear. You are a lifesaver, literally. <clears throat> mm. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> okay. Gathering the following ingredients. A rocking chair, photo albums chronicling your life. These are some strange ingredients. Music from the era in which you were born, two hula hoops, a pumpkin, and a bottle of wine and two glasses. Mercy, I haven't drunk wine in years and a hula hoop. Hmm, there might just be a couple in the basement from when the kids were little. I'll have to check. Clara putters around her living room, gathering the items needed. She pulls up a rocking chair, finds the photo albums, pumpkin, hula hoops, wine, and glasses, and puts the old record player on to some 1940s soft jazz. There. That seems to be all of it. Hmm. Now, sit down, face your subject, and begin. Begin what? Oh, I knew this was a big mistake. What a waste of time I don't have. Help. Let this subject lead the way. Let this subject lead the way. Okay. I guess you're the subject, so lead the way. Annabelle stares back at her and tries her best to gesture to the fact that her mouth is taped up. Oh, right. It would probably help if you could speak. 
She rips the tape off of Annabelle's mouth. Ouch! Oh, I'm sorry, dear. What do you want? Why did you bring me here? I brought you here because you are the number one ingredient in my restoration of youth magic spell. I need your help. What could I possibly have to offer you? I'm just... I don't know. Really, I don't. Oh, I'm so sorry for all of this. I'm just desperate. Desperate to find my way back to being my younger self again. But kidnapping you can't possibly be the way. She unties her. There. You're free to go. I, I'm sorry for all of this. But at least if they sentence me to life in prison, I won't have very long to serve. Annabelle scrambles to the door and then stops and turns back. Clara has sunk onto the rocking chair with her head in her hands, lamenting her poor judgment. Well, damage is done, so I guess I'll be leaving. Clara looks up. Now, if you would have been here and spent some time with you, I would have. Remind me so much of my own grandmother. I lost her a few years ago, and... Every day. Really? Yeah. We would have had the best of times together when I was growing up. She taught me to bake and sew, and I would take her sledding in the winter time and apple picking in the fall. I said that I kept her young. I'm not sure I understood what that meant until this very moment. Your grandmother was a lucky woman to have had you. My kids are all too busy these days with their own lives to worry much about me and their kids as well. And since my Herbert died six years ago, I, I I just don't feel useful any longer. And I feel myself just fading away. I'm just not important to anyone anymore. Clara, I'm sorry. No, I'm not actually your kid or grandchild. To hear about them, if you'd like to tell me. Really? All my friends are sick to death of hearing my old stories. Well, I don't know. Where do I begin? Annabelle picks up a photo album and puts it in her lap. How about we start here? And before we get going, let's break open some of this wine, shall we? Oh my, yes. It's been such a long while since I've had company. You must forgive my manners. They're a bit rusty. Never mind. It has been so long since I've had, dare I say, a girl's night? Well, let's get to it. I can't wait to hear everything. Clara opens the book. Oh, this is Herbert and I on our wedding day, 1947. Feels like yesterday. Herbert was a Marine when I met him, so handsome in his uniform. I never could resist a man in uniform. Always got in trouble pinching their cute little backsides. <laughs> <laughs> Fade to black. Scene four. Lights up on the same scene, but it is now several hours later and several glasses of wine later. They are giddy and laughing and acting as if they have known each other for years. <laughs> and that <laughs> is when Herbert and I mooned all the motorists on the overpass on a dare. <laughs> oh, we were young and carefree and wild in those days. Not a worry in the world. Just happiness. Oh, Clara, these stories are why I am so happy that you are willing to share them with me. Well, it's not like you had much of a choice. I did um, kidnap you and bring you here. They look at each other for a moment and then burst into gales of laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Please, though. 
this is like the best thing that's happened to me in a long time. Life has been since my grand died. No matter what I tried, I never could fill that hole in my heart until tonight. I am so glad you feel that way. This is the youngest and most alive I have felt in years, and I don't ever want this feeling to end. Thank you, Annabelle. Thank you so very much. You have brought happiness and purpose back to my life, and for that, I'm so very grateful. I feel as if I, I could go dancing in the streets. You are the magic potion, my fountain of youth. I will never forget what you have done for me. Annabelle reaches over and hugs Clara. It is nothing compared to what you have done. Clara smiles and catches the clock out of the corner of her eye. Oh my, will you look at the time? Seven o'clock already, and it's Halloween night. As young as you are, you must have plans, and I'm keeping you from them. Clara rises and prepares to show Annabelle to the door. Right, I do have plans. Now, so do... Halloween was my grandma's favorite holiday. Carve that pumpkin, rustle up some scary costumes to terrorize the trick-or-treaters who come to the door, and hula hoop the night away to the monster mash. Annabelle rushes over to the radio, removes the record, and tunes the radio to a spooky Halloween station where the monster mash is playing. She picks up one of the hula hoops and holds it out to Clara. Hula hoop? My, my, I haven't done this since I was a girl. Oh, drat. I don't think my hips move like that anymore. Like this, Graham. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I got carried away. But... It would be an absolute honor to be your Graham. She was a lucky woman, and now so am I. Clara reaches out her arms to Annabelle and hugs her tight while they both cry tears of joy. <laughs> I love you, Graham. I love you, too. <laughs> for reminding me. Thank you for finding me. The lights slowly fade to black as they settle down to carve their pumpkins. The end. Oh, thank you guys so much. What a nice, wholesome play to end on after this tumultuous emotional night. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, that's our show for tonight. Um, yes. Thanks again to all of our Patreon members um, for all that they do for us, all of their generous donations if you'd like to be a patreon member we left the link in the um comments of this video feel free to peruse the benefits um now i have to write a whole other extra thing for sarah henderson for july so that's super fun thanks a lot sarah <laughs> just kidding I mean, it's great. Thank you so much. We'll it's see amazing. <laughs> um, but that's our show. Uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Oh, wait. Oh, we wait, have to say the prompts. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm just, just we've, got, <laughs> we've had no issues all day, and I just want to I want to shut down. off by the <laughs> lack of issues. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So uh, if you're unfamiliar with this challenge or the way it works, uh, basically we have um, a few dialogue prompts, a few uh, props, and then a set uh, that we give you the prompts for. You write the play in 48 hours. You hand it to us uh, Sunday at uh, uh, 9 o'clock, so this coming Sunday. Um, we have three lines of dialogue. I'll give you those whenever I'm ready, which is now. <laughs> you clicked your heels and wished and wished for me. Is it wishes or wished, Madison? Wished. It okay. is wished. It is a Panic at the Disco song. Look it up. I <laughs> what? Oh, rude. Okay. <laughs> you clicked your heels and wished for me. Um, did you hear that? And can you not? Um, the props 
are an action figure, a shovel, and an hourglass. And our set, we actually just have one prompt this week. Uh, it is a spooky haunted church. So take that and run with it, folks. We'll post the, um, or we'll email you the prompts if you're on our list. But if you're not on your list, you can't on our list you can be just send us a quick email and you'll be on the list every week uh but there you go prompts almost two full hours early so uh that's it everybody thank you so much for joining us uh and have a great weekend goodbye goodbye